The following program is a West Tennessee PBS special presentation made possible through the generous financial support of viewers like you. Please visit westtnpbs.org and make a donation today so that we can continue to make local programs like this possible. Thank you. It's reimagining how electric vehicles and batteries are designed and built. Hello, I'm Steve Beverly, and on this edition of Tennessee is Talking, the topic is the new Ford Blue Oval SK campus in Haywood County. From their current status to what jobs they're hiring, we have the plant manager with us. So let the conversation begin. That's so cool. And then that's when I said that. The problem with that idea is. Wow, that was amazing. Then I came up with a solution. What was that about? Here's what I think about it. Now we're talking. West Tennessee PBS presents Tennessee is Talking. Let the conversation begin. Thanks for joining the discussion. I'm Steve Beverly, and today we're talking about the new Blue Oval SK campus near Stanton in Haywood County. And who better to get the inside scoop from than plant manager Tracy Church? And Tracy, thanks so much for giving us your time today. It's great to have you with us. Absolutely. I'm happy to be here with you. I want to start off today by <clears throat> particularly, we have new people who move into West Tennessee all the time. And perhaps we have people who haven't been in the loop or in the know about Blue Oval SK. Give us just a thumbnail of how this project mm -hmm. originated. So Ford, of course, has a has a big big vision for being uh, a leader in the automotive electrification effort in the United States in the in the coming years. With that, they made the decision to build a completely new vehicle assembly plant for that for that next um, completely redesigned electric vehicle. West Tennessee was chosen for for the location for that facility, and that was the birth of Blue Oval City. With that, as, as part of Blue Oval City, of course, Blue Oval SK will, will have a plant there as well. Blue Oval SK is the partnership, the joint venture partnership that Ford has created with, with SK On. SK On is a battery company headquartered in South Korea. So Blue Oval SK is the, the joint venture between those two big companies and the plant at Blue Oval City will supply batteries for the vehicle at Blue Oval City as well, the Ford vehicle plant. This has to be exciting for you personally to be involved in a project that has this kind of innovation to it. Absolutely it is. And and actually it's a it's a bit of a return to this piece of the industry for me. I, I spent a lot of years with with another automaker in Tennessee and actually had a bit of experience in this about a decade ago. So for me, it really is exciting to have a chance to do that again on a much grander scale with a company like Ford and of course the, the Blue Oval SK joint venture with SK, with SK on. Um, I guess particularly exciting for me is I'm a native Tennessean. I've spent most of my life living in Middle Tennessee, so it's been really enjoyable for me to, to start to learn West Tennessee and be part of something that's going to transform West Tennessee, lots of people's lives and for generations to come. So that is really very personally exciting for me. Bring us up to date on where we stand with the construction. Sure. So the construction, if you saw the plant today, it almost looks complete as far as the building. It's, it's in fully enclosed now. Now around the grounds, of course, none of the concrete, asphalt, none of that is present yet and there are still thousands of workers on this on the site every day but we've started just after the first of the year started to bring the the basic equipment into the plant that's the the HVAC systems and the um, power power systems into the plant starting in about a month from now we'll have our actual process equipment will start to be installed so it's starting to be very exciting every day now, what is the at least ballpark mm -hmm. target for having everything complete, <clears throat> up and running to where the first product mm -hmm. is turned out in the plant? So 2025, which is a little bit closer every day. But I it know. comes closer it, 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 absolutely <laughs> and faster. It does. Absolutely it does. When we, 
when I joined this program almost two years ago, that seemed so far in the future, but we're actually saying next year now. So somewhere in the later part of next year is when, is when we intend to, to start production. Okay, what kinds of jobs are we talking about? Because you got such a broad base of people mm -hmm. who live here, and many people I know are interested in working for this particular mm -hmm. project. So give us just an idea of some of the different kinds of jobs that the company is going to be looking for. Mm -hmm. So 2,500 jobs is the, is the estimation at this point for, for Blue Oval SK and, and Blue Oval City. Of course, the majority of those will be the production workers, operators mm -hmm. running the production lines and the maintenance technicians who support the, the equipment on the, on the production lines. Mm -hmm. The jo those jobs, actually, we've started to hire for those now. Um, the requirements for those are, and I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because the requirements may not be exactly what some people would expect. Making batteries is very new for everyone. Mm -hmm. So we don't expect people to, applicants, to have battery experience necessarily. Manufacturing experience is a plus, of course, and for a maintenance technician, they, we do have a requirement that they have an a ma industrial maintenance certificate or an associate's degree in a relevant field. So there are some specific requirements around maintenance but for the, the production workers. Really, it's more about curious people who want to learn a new skill set, a new technology, and have that drive to want to be part of something this big. That's really the main requirement for someone in the into the production areas. Now, along with that, of course, we have supervisors, team managers, but even HR, finance, all the supporting types of roles as well. So there really is probably a job for just about anyone who has interest. There's probably a match in a, in a field that um, for just about anyone in the area who's, who's interested in um, pursuing a career. Well, for people who are interested in mm -hmm. pursuing that, the magic question mm -hmm. is, what is the best way right now for them to apply? The Blue Oval SK website, and that's Blue Oval SK Dot com. All the active job postings are, are there. There's a, also a way to, for people to interested people to sign up for the newsletter distribution and that gives just general updates on the construction, any timing updates, um, and even talks some about more specifics around some of the jobs to be posted. But we truly are just getting started, so it's a great opportunity still for people to come in and be part of that, that ground floor team. Tracy, any time that you have a major new employer, and I underscore that word major, there is such huge interest in community involvement beyond just the jobs that it will provide. And we know that Blue Oval SK is committed to local community projects in West mm -hmm. Tennessee. What can you elaborate on about that? So we've already had, even with the small number of people we have on board now, we've already had some opportunities to do exactly that. And the, our, our team is so excited every time we have an opportunity to do that. We've supported a Habitat for Humanity build back in December. And then we've had team members work with RIFA, Dream Center, just to, just to name a couple, but we really look forward to having other opportunities to have people engage in, in local efforts. This may not be an area that you've explored that deeply yet, mm -hmm. but we have areas here in Jackson such as Early College High with the Jackson Central Mary High School where, frankly, high school seniors have the opportunity to get mm -hmm if I guess the best way we could call it many internships with a number of areas. How would that possibly mm -hmm. occur here is long term do you project that you would have internship availabilities for young people who maybe want to learn mm -hmm. this business? We do envision that as part of our future opportunities. This year of course we're still in construction and very very limited in terms of what we can mm -hmm. do on the site so we're probably looking maybe next year at the earliest, I would imagine, on um, on being able to do something like that. But I personally very supportive of programs like that. And I know many of us who came from other companies who've had great success in those programs to start building those relationships with the colleges and universities. And you mentioned internships, but we've discussed even more extensive co-op programs mm -hmm. or even 
project teams specifically for certain classes with some of the local universities and we're taking opportunities already to, to work with the administrations at some of those universities and other facilities to have those relationships for, for the future. So, so we have we have a big vision for that space. It's almost unlimited opportunities where that's concerned. I have to really, I always try to explore <clears throat> with someone who is in your area of responsibility and that is just seeing how this has evolved from when you started with your current job, mm -hmm. seeing how this evolved, how exciting is it just to go to the plant every single day and see something new or seeing just even small progress develop? And you said it exactly right. Every day, if I don't go necessarily every single day still because it's still a construction site, but if I go um, the beginning of the week and the end of the week, you can absolutely see see a change. And that is, of course, there are stresses and different pressures that we're starting to face with a, with a program like this. But when you go and see that that change, it really regrounds for me personally, regrounds me and re-energizes that excitement. And then when I'm able to go visit with the team, they're in, the tr in some training facilities now primarily, go visit with the team and give them updates on or share some photos with the with the team. It's really exciting for everyone to see it starting to come together because we started with just drawings on paper and really to see it come to life is really just hard to describe that. This potentially changes the face of transportation <clears throat> mm -hmm. for so many, many people. Mm -hmm. In particular, how important is it for all of us to know more about how this is going to change the way that we actually move from place to place every day? Mm -hmm. it, from a consumer perspective, there is a lot of information, a lot, lot to learn. I know I've been impressed by starting to see vehicle chargers in so many different locations in West Tennessee. So I know the local communities and local agencies are very interested in getting that out there. And that, that's step one is to have the infrastructure in place. And I, I know that, that we're, start, we're seeing that change um, then from a consumer perspective to just be open-minded and have that um, that thought process around how can not I guess shifting from why is an electric vehicle not a good fit for me versus how can it be the right the right fit for me and it's it's a process no doubt about that but it's great to see so many people everywhere I go and when people know what I'm what I'm doing of course they have questions exactly like that so it's really enjoyable to have those conversations with people who are so so anxious to learn more about that and how like you said it's going to impact how we move from place to place I remember when we saw the first charging stations installed at Casey Jones Village mm -hmm. here in Jackson mm -hmm. and just thinking about at that point in time I remember the late Clark <coughs> Shaw mentioned about that his son was the one, and of course uh, his son Brooks is now the general manager of the mm -hmm. place, and Brooks, he, I remember Clark said, he gets it, and, and about the mm -hmm. fact that this was the future, and is the future, and, and it was amazing just to see how all of that transformed, and it's, you know, granted, it's a slow process, mm -hmm. but it, at the same point in time, to be part of a game changer is just, is amazing. What do you think is the one or two things, what are the one or two things that you think would really surprise or amaze people most about the Blue Oval SK campus? The size of the campus, I guess, is the first thing. I think that's the first impression because you can't, you can't see it from the interstate. Mm -hmm. You have to be on the, on the road adjoining the, the site to be able to see it. So probably not everyone has had a chance to see it. But the size, it just, you can't describe it. And even showing aerial photos or, or aerial footage, video footage until you see it in person. It's just, it's that overwhelming to see that. The battery plant, the, the Blue Oval SK plant will be, is almost four, almost four million square feet. And that's just a, the size that's of mind that. boggling. It, it is. really Probably is. Probably most people have never even seen a building close to that size. And then the, the Ford, the truck plant for Ford is divided into multiple buildings but it's it's almost that same square footage so that that's the first impression i think that people get and then the the second thing at the moment is 
how many people are there working every day and how impressive it is that all this has come together really in a relatively short time when we think about when the groundbreaking was and when actually when did construction start. It hasn't been that much over a year really since substantial construction started. So the, the speed at which this has all come together and again that's that's Ford's vision to be that leader and, and to be the leader and, and to have Blue Oval SK be a part of being the leader in the industry. Speed is of the essence at now. Everyone's racing to have that that battery capacity in place to support that getting that market share in the electrification. When word first started about this plant and that this was what it was going to be, mm -hmm. after many years of many people <clears throat> wanting to know, okay, what eventually is going to go there? And then it was a big excitement when the announcement sure. was made at that point. But the piece that is also a huge part of this is economic development Absolutely. in all of our surrounding counties. Jackson right here where we're doing this show and the other counties. It has to be huge as far as potentially with 2,500 jobs and all of those people have families mm -hmm. and you know they got to be able to buy stuff everywhere they mm -hmm. go and it's got to be huge for the economic sure. development for all of West Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and that, that's a big part of the excitement for me is to see that from the beginning. I mentioned before that I've worked in the automotive industry and I saw what a company like Nissan has done for the Middle Tennessee area, the immediate area around the plant, but like you mentioned, all the surrounding counties. That, that's, the, that's the core of what transformed Middle Tennessee and to be part of, to see that from the very beginning in West Tennessee is so exciting. You named a few with retail and commercial needs and residential and what that it's almost impossible to envision all the change that it brings but it's all such tremendous progress and it, it changes people's it changes the lives of of families who maybe their the parent gets a job in the mm -hmm. in the in a plant and sees all the opportunities now their children they can go to college and become an engineer and now they have an employer like that in the area so they don't have to leave home and work in another part of the state or outside the state so it, it changes families for generations to come. That's a huge thing because so often families have to separate mm -hmm. whenever the kids go to college and they get their jobs afterward and <clears throat> it sends them scurrying across the country. It does. And this is so different where that's concerned. Mm -hmm. Walk me through at this stage of the game, walk me through what your day is like when you go to the campus. Okay. So I don't go to the campus every day just yet mm -hmm. because we're still um, and I, I shouldn't, I didn't mention in the beginning, Blue Oval SK also is building two plants in Kentucky. So it's Glendale, Kentucky is the other site for Blue, for Blue Oval SK. The first plant in Kentucky actually launches a few months ahead of the plant here. Mm -hmm. So with that being our pilot plant, if you will, I'm still spending a fair amount of time with, with that team. So I still do a lot of travel there and of course that's still meetings around timelines and equipment installation timelines and getting the report outs from the different groups to make sure that everything is on schedule. So some of that is still there, but when I'm, I'm here locally, that's where I'm conveying that information to, to my team. I have my core leadership team mm -hmm. on board now and they're assigned, each of them are assigned a process area within the plant. So it's a lot of information sharing with them and then they've started to form their teams with the number of people we've, we've hired and so it's conveying that information to them so they can keep their teams updated getting hiring um, reports from the HR team because like you've mentioned 25 hiring 2500 people doesn't happen overnight it doesn't happen with a lot of effort and collaboration so it's um, getting those updates and understanding what can we do to help that effort going to career fairs and different events locally to keep getting the visibility out there doing things like this mm -hmm. to keep the visibility and the excitement alive um, and then of course just working closely with the teams at the site the engineering teams who are overseeing the equipment installation to make sure that we're giving the proper support and understanding how we can take down the barriers to um, make sure that because it all has to come together at the same time. Yeah, this is not an instant no, process no, by any stretch of the imagination. Absolutely not. So it's really just managing 
all those different timelines and getting the report outs from all the leaders of those teams to, to make sure that everything's progressing along. Tracy, I'm always curious about a person who's in your area of responsibility. When you were, say, 15, 16, 18 years old, it's not necessarily the thing that you're thinking in your mind, I'm going to be a plant manager. If somebody says, what do you want to do after right. graduation? Right. I want to be a plant manager for a game-changing <laughs> industry. How did this all develop for you? I mean, what was your career goal when you first started? So I'm an engineer by yeah. degree. So I knew that I wanted to, and I did a, a co-op opportunity when I was in college, and I worked at a local manufacturing facility in my hometown. So mm -hmm. that's where I, I knew that manufacturing is where I wanted to be. But like you said, even knowing that, you can envision exactly what that role is. So it's really just over the course of starting as an engineer, and having mentors and having great opportunities with previous employers to explore and understand different areas of the process. And, but what really is my passion, I guess, in the manufacturing space is building the teams mm -hmm. and being a part of those teams. And that, that led me into operations leadership. And then, of course, this role, I was just fortunate to have a little bit of past experience in um, electric vehicles. And then, of course, a lot of automotive experience and being a Tennessean and wanting to be a part of something this big for our state is what led me to this specific role. It's the old story of hire good people, good teams, and then let them do their jobs. Absolutely. And that's the huge part of it. For people who perhaps maybe have just joined us at this mm -hmm. point, you mentioned this earlier, but I want to stress this again because this is huge for the folks at home that might be interested in the employment mm -hmm. aspect of it. So if you would be kind enough to, again, tell people how they can go about applying mm -hmm. for potential jobs or find out what jobs are available at this stage of the game. Yes, the Blue Oval SK website, and that's blueovalsk.com and it has all the current job postings. And then I mentioned there's also a newsletter where interested people can, can sign up for the newsletter to get periodic updates on different information about the site and, and specifically around jobs. Is that available via email or say in the regular mail, the, the uh, newsletter? Newsletter, it's by email, it's electronic. Okay, so you can, if you, go online and you mm -hmm. ask and you check that box and then so you will begin to get the periodic that, yes. information on that. Yes. That is so huge because so many people when this project was announced and then the we find out 2,500 jobs are available, mm -hmm. that is the first thing that comes to mm -hmm. mind because it is so crucial to continue to develop homegrown talent It is when we have that here. I cannot begin to tell you how exciting this is to be able to see all of this unfold and develop and in particular just thinking about what economically, population wise, whatever, yes. it changes the face of so many areas mm -hmm. here in our area. It will, absolutely it will. And I should have mentioned while most of the jobs that are, will be available initially will be production operators, mm -hmm. we intend to develop our internal talent so someone starts their career as a, as a production operator. There's opportunity to become supervisor, team manager. That's the other really great thing about being part of something this, at this stage of the game, being on the ground floor, is there's so much personal career growth for people that, they, that may not be apparent just from the jobs that are available now. Tracy Church, plant manager for Blue Oval SK here in Haywood County, but really the tentacles reach out to all of West yes, Tennessee. Sir. We are so grateful for you spending your time with us today and I hope you'll come back again and update us. I would love to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Steve Beverly and remember that you can stream today's program and all local Channel 11 programs on the PBS app, the West Tennessee PBS YouTube channel and on westtnpbs.org. And you can keep the conversation going Follow West Tennessee PBS on social media. Thanks for joining us, and so long, everybody. Do you have a topic you'd like to see discussed on a future episode of Tennessee is Talking? Maybe you want to be a guest and have something to talk about. Send your ideas to Talking at westtnpbs.org. Include all your contact information and let the conversation continue. 
Tennessee is Talking is a presentation of West Tennessee PBS with the goal of bringing people together, sharing ideas, thoughts, and different perspectives, learning from each other, and sharing a civil and respectful discussion. Tennessee is Talking, the show that brings West Tennessee together. conversation isn't over it's just beginning send west tennessee pbs your thoughts about today's program to tns is talking at westtnpbs.org your email may be shared on air during a future program what are your thoughts your opinions your ideas send an email to tns is talking at westtnpbs.org email us and let the conversation continue This program you've been watching was made possible through the generous financial support of West Tennessee PBS viewers like you. Please visit westtnpbs.org and make a donation today so that we can continue to make local programs like this possible. Thank you.